Everybody wants to learn how to use Blender. I already know how to use a Blender. Not that type of Blender, silly. We're talking Blender 3D. With this Blender, you can make anything you can dream of. How do I use it? That's the hard part. I decided to teach myself how to use Blender in 30 days. Here's how it went. Now I'm sure most of you probably already know this by now, but I'm learning how to make video games in 3D. I'm mostly a video game artist, if you could call what I make art. So I decided the first thing I wanted to learn was Blender. I'm sure most of you like me have seen some guy on the internet that just made like an infinite pottery generator or something and they're like, oh I did this with geometry nodes and you're like what blender just has so many cool features that sets it apart from any other 3d modeling software plus it's free that's the real reason i'm learning blender let's be honest so how am i going to learn blender in just 30 days i don't know let's find out I only had like one learning strategy and it was to avoid tutorials at all cost. No Blender Donut! No! Now let me preface this with the fact that I actually do have a little bit of experience with Blender. Just a little bit, just enough to know the basics of modeling and stuff. So not a lot, but I didn't need a tutorial to learn how to do every little thing at the start. You see there's this thing called tutorial hell, where you just get stuck watching tutorials over and over and over again but you're not actually learning anything. I've been there. It's not fun. There's some good tutorials out there, but a lot of other ones just don't explain the why behind what you're doing. So you finally finish making your photorealistic blender donut, but you have no idea what just happened. So I actually avoided tutorials over these last 30 days, except for when there was one specific thing that I needed to learn. Then I would look up a tutorial for that one thing and apply it right away. That was my strategy personally. I, I don't know if that would work for everyone, but for me, I mostly learn by doing things and making mistakes. If you tell me to just press the blue button and twist the thingamajig and the light turns on, I'll come back in two minutes with no idea how to turn the light on. But if I just do it, twist the thingamajig and push the blue button, wait, or was it the blue button and then the thingamajig? Now I know, and I'm never forgetting, and I learn even more when I make mistakes. So I skipped the Blender Donut tutorial this time around and just decided to jump in and start creating with a project. I've been applying this process of learning by doing to other things that I want to figure out as well, like making games in Godot. I've actually been working on that using classes on Skillshare, which is the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is the biggest online learning community for creative people, with thousands of classes where you can learn and improve in a ton of different creative mediums. Now I've noticed a big difference between just finding random tutorials on the internet versus the classes on Skillshare. They're much more organized and in-depth, with a big focus on helping you learn and create things along the way. They've got a bunch of courses on Blender, as well as all the big game engines. They've also got courses on coming out with good ideas, art, and drawing, and basically everything you could hope for as a creative person. Like I said, I've been following this course to learn Godot better. I love that the class is separated into little like 10 to 15 minute chunks, so I've been doing a lesson a day to make consistent progress towards learning 3D game development. Before using Skillshare, I wasn't really making much progress because I felt a little bit lost with all the new things in Godot, but this course has been awesome. I've also just been enjoying random classes about things I've always wanted to learn about, like this class on how to speak better on camera. I've been listening to these classes while I walk to school and during my free time to be constantly learning something new. For all of you who'd like to give it a try, the first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare, so you can get started today. Big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let me introduce you to someone. I have this problem where I'll start modeling something and then I'll just like hate it halfway through so I'll delete it, start over, and then I hate it halfway through and I delete it, I start over, and I just do that over and over again until an hour's gone by and I haven't actually made anything. So I wanted to create a project from start to finish more or less and I decided to share the process. This is Herbert. He's been my main learning project over the last 30 days. I made shorts documenting the process which is kind of cool because now I can look back and see how much he's changed. It started out with the concept. Uh, I usually skip this part, but it's actually really important to have like a 2D concept before you just jump in and start modeling. It's so much harder to make a good model with no reference, and I've learned that the hard way. I wanted to try making this pelican looking fella, so with the 2D drawing done, I put it in Blender, put the front view and the side view together so I could kind of use them as like a size reference. Obviously my concept art was not very fleshed out or precise, so I definitely used it more as like a loose guideline, but it worked good enough. This was the model after day one. I didn't have the energy to make wings, so I just grabbed some arms that I had modeled 
previously and just stuck them on there kind of as a placeholder. Someone suggested that I name him Herbert and I didn't have any other ideas so I just kind of went with it. I ended up having to go back and basically redo all of the topology though because it was horrible. Like there were just a bunch of lines overlapping each other. It was just a mess. I also ended up making new eyes using the grease pencil tool. Now let me take a second to talk about the grease pencil tool because this thing is sick. The grease pencil is something pretty unique to Blender that I've fallen in love with. I decided when I started making YouTube videos again that I didn't want to pay for Adobe Animate anymore. So I decided to learn how to make 2D animations in Blender. Turns out it's actually super cool. It's a different workflow so it's been a bit of a learning curve but I've been able to make several animated segments for my videos with it as well as all of the art for my GMTK game jam game. It's cool because when you draw in 2D it actually is in 3D. So I used the grease pencil tool a few times when I was making Herbert as well. Now back to Herbert. 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 For the next challenge, I decided to give him a hat, and lots of people suggested a sailor's hat. I got to experiment with texture painting, and it turned out pretty badly, honestly, but it was good enough. I actually used grease pencil again to make a little anchor on the hat, which looks pretty cool. Everyone kept commenting, asking for me to shade him smooth. The reason I didn't want to is because it looked bad because of all the weird shapes on the model. So I ended up actually just deleting the head, the body, and then the legs, and just remaking them. I focused on making them much more low poly, and they turned out way better. Doing that helped me discover that a lot of times, simplest is best, and sometimes it takes a few iterations to get the best version of something. After that, shading smooth looked a lot better, and I was even able to figure out a simple cell shader, which turned out awesome. I love how I immediately made Herbert look like a character out of the Wind Waker or something. Also, I finally replaced the arms with wings. The arms were kind of cursed, I'll admit that. I then announced that I was going to give him a weapon, and I got some cool suggestions for like a skeleton fish spear. So I modeled a fish skeleton, but I didn't look at very many references when I was doing that and I ended up with this monstrosity. After actually looking at a picture of a fish skeleton, I realized what my error was and I fixed it. I think one of my weaknesses that I keep coming back to is I don't think I need reference for things. Just because I'm modeling in 3D instead of drawing in 2D, it feels like I can just make stuff up. But I think reference is even more important in 3D than it is in 2D. So I'm working on overcoming that weakness. I put the fish skeleton on the end of a stick and called it a spear. It actually looks kind of sick. But I'm not exactly sure how effective of a weapon a fish spear would be. Through the process of creating Herbert, I discovered how awesome making 3D characters is. There's something about the freedom to just make goofy, stylized characters in 3D that is so fun. And it was even more fun getting participation from the community to make it. As I continue learning 3D, I want to make sure I keep y'all involved in the process because it's super fun. At the time of making this video, I'm currently working on making rigs in Blender, which is super important so I can actually animate my characters. I actually managed to get a rig set up with the weight painting on a different model that I'm working on, and I made a little idle animation, but that's as far as I've gotten so far. But I've got a lot ahead of me, and I have some confessions to make. Looking back, there are definitely some things I would change. I definitely lacked consistency. I could see two perspectives from people watching this video. Either you're like, oh, that's that's cool. He learned how to make a little fella in 30 days. Good good job. Or that's it. That That's all you learned in 30 days. That's everything. Now, I'll admit that over the last 30 days, there's been a lot that's happened. You'll probably notice that I am not in the same place. I made it to college. So it's tough to find a lot of time to just grind learning Blender. The name of the game was Small Achievable Progress and Enjoying the Journey. And so far, I've loved it. Obviously, this was just the first 30 days, and I plan to continue to keep learning and growing my skills in Blender. Plus, now that I'm here in college, I've got some roommates that I'm going to team up with and make a video game, so I can focus a little bit more on the art side of things. And we've got something we're cooking up, so you're going to want to subscribe. I actually talked a lot about 3D game development and some other cool stuff like style in this video that I made recently, so make sure to go watch that next. I'll see you around. Goodbye.